My religion uh, is, is the worship of Ann Carson. <laughs> it's a small group of us who meet regularly. I, I seem to have all my life had the capacity to believe in some rather incredibly um, unlikely phenomena for brief periods and to truly believe that I had been called on, for instance, by people from outer space. And this is called What is True for a Minute. My alien in Alabama was an invisible noise, a woof or a hurrah that rose from the ground or hovered in the air, and I attempted to talk with it, first in English, then with songs, Love Me Tender and Town Without Pity. Then with the sounds that are not words. When I went left, it moved to my right. When I went right, it was behind me again. It was like the alien in North Carolina that coughed from the upstairs apartment where no one lived, except the alien in North Carolina was a clanking radiator, while the Alabama alien was the noise of the drain from the washing machine. In El Salvador, an alien followed me one night when I was angry and drunk and intending to walk the beach to Baja, California. It swung a machete over its head, a shur and a hish. And when I stopped to plead for my life, it turned into a crab, scuttled across the sand and vanished under a pile of driftwood. None of my aliens stay long. Mostly I was lonely when I saw them. I was sad or scared or the breath had been knocked from me. Once a wall spoke. A deer instructed me. A puppy looked at me with the eyes of my newly dead friend and staring back at it, I thought of how the gods appeared to men, except my aliens were never gods. One was a shadow. One was a cotton mouth underwater. My alien in Charento was a real woman, almost a girl from early Yates, but in jogging shorts. She moved down the steps to the sea. She was from the earth, but also of the air. And as she began running lightly, a light rain from down the coast of Malfi began taking the parts of her and stirring them into mist. I think she was a figure for desire or fear who came into the world for a minute and disappeared forever. That is the way with aliens. All evanescence, all difference, unknowable presences, enemies of description. They wait and their work is seeming. They speak with the voice of listening. I live with an extremely wonderful uh, hater. And so over the years I started collecting the hatreds. This is called the essence of man. What kind of person would hate the color blue? Hate the salesman who jiggles change and the nurse who murmurs with the voice of a little girl. And the leg that cannot sit for a minute without making a minor tremor register on the Richter scale. Hate infants in general and conversation starters. Hate thongs, medallions, ice cubes, conservatives, mayonnaise, mouth breathers, foreplay, pencil tappers, and burkas. Hate both the Iliad and the Odyssey, <laughs> and delivery vans, and the idea of diaries. Hate plum sauces, exclamation marks, train crossings, and funeral flowers. And how could a person hate cuckoo clocks, and text messaging, hate wedding parties, and David Letterman, hate the day of the week, hate both the beauty pageant and the ugly stick. Hate equitably the chihuahua and the jello salad. Hate Jazz Patch, Van Dyke, and Fu Manchu. In an age of mercury and mass extinctions, what sort of citizen would expend her hate on the double pleat and the star-nosed mole, on parade floats and essays on public radio, would abhor people named Tiffany or Dale, and beckon the handsome, articulate waiter, oh, enjoy, how could a person act that way? The candidate for national office is introducing the family of the dead firemen who rescued a schoolhouse. The famous baseball player is pointing to heaven as he rounds first base. The Beatles harmonize. The inspirational speakers are shopping for boats. 
Surely it would be counterproductive to hate nicknames, elevators, and remote controls, to speak out against body piercings and snowmobiles, utterly ridiculous to detest weekends because on Sunday it is necessary to rise early to beat the whistler to the grocery store. Oh, it must be terrible not to have a Mexican, not to have a great Satan or a lunatic Muslim, some gay person or Jew, but to have to make do with the rain and one squeaking wiper blade. Oh, gods of carnage and inestimable slaughter, the smell of brute, the taste of coconut. For, for eight years, I was just insane. I would write everything I wrote would end up being a, 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 a George W. Bush hatred poem. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how many of you were destroyed, but I mean, the, the, there, there's some things that, you, the, the, that are just consecutive thoughts again and again. Just like, dumb, 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 dumb. <laughs> and this, this was one of those uh, poems. It was called The Language of Love. It has taken 35 years to be this confident of what happens between the noun and the verb. Eventually, love goes. The image, then the thought, no. Then you are still alive, only a little. And then, I do not mean to depress you, men have to hear before they see. Sacred vows, drop shirts. Women do not speak to men, they are overheard. Sadness mounts people. Around the burn scar, high on one thigh, the body of the beloved will vanish, and the cum cries and salt hair smells of lovemaking. Secret fiction, holy matrimony, longest short story. The troth two lovers pledge to one another is none of the president's business. Let him say what he wants. He is no good with words. Ask any true lesbian. He should take a poetry workshop with Adrian Rich. He should try using... <laughs> the world less and words more. <laughs> People say don't preach, but you know. People make a good living preaching. I find joy in the cemetery trees. Their roots are in our hearts. And their leaves, the soul of another century, is in ascension. I hear the rustling of their branches and watch the exhausted laborers from the Burgreen Construction Company sit down in the shade, unwrapping their ham sandwiches and popping open their thermoses. Apparently, they too are enamored of the hickory and willow at the edge of our cemetery. They're a stretching twine, building a wall as though this could be contained. Probably they do not think of our grandmothers who were pierced, and probably they do not want to hear about Thomas Hardy, who, if I remember, has been dead longer than they have been alive, and who gave to the leaves of one you the names of his own dead. Anyway, the only spirits I can call in this place are the stench of a possum superating in secret weeds and the flies, who are marvelous because their appetite is our revulsion. Let the labors go on. Right now, I wish I could admire the trees simply for their architecture. All winter, the dying have set their tables, and now they're almost as black as the profound waters off Guam. A few minutes ago, when they started in a slight breeze off the lake, the many impatient sails, I could see in those motions a little of the world that owns me and that I cannot understand rise in its indifferent passion. Thank you.